Welcome back everyone, it's Robert Hall and in today's video I want to do an update on a video I made last year which is going over the retouch for me retouching plugins. In that video last year I spoke really highly of these plugins and in today's video I want to go over how I feel about them after a year, how much time they've saved me, and I want to talk about all the updates and changes that have been made to these plugins. And these plugins do multiple things that you would commonly do in retouching such as dodge and burning, such as healing or spot removal, uh, removing vessels from eyes, this software can do all of that with incredible precision. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the changes that they've made. So the first big addition is the addition of the panel, the Retouch From Me panel. Before, you had to go to filter and then you could pick any of these, but what you end up doing a lot is using three or four of these. And that's where the panel is really superior because you can select multiple and then have them run in sequence. So here I can select heal, followed by D and B, followed by skin tone, and just click run. And it will run all three of those in order. And each one will be on an independent layer. So you can still go in and modify different values after the fact. So you can see once it's done, I now have three layers. I have a heal layer, which is going to go ahead and patch any rough areas in the skin. Then we have the dodge and burn layer, which is going to smooth out transitions between light and dark by lightening dark areas and darkening light areas. And then we have the skin tone action, which is going to clean up some of the color changes throughout the skin tone. The next change is that eye vessels has been broken off into two separate plugins, although both come when you purchase the eye vessels plugin, and that is eye vessels and eye brilliance. Eye vessels has done what it's always done, which is get rid of any of the red veins in the eyes. Eye brilliance is just as it sounds it's going to brighten the entire eye area now if you go to filter retouch for me and then open up the eye brilliance just like the eye vessels you now have control of the portrait size so you can do a close-up a medium length or a full length portrait or you can just leave it in auto i don't have any problems with auto so i never mess with it i just let it go now i do find the eye brilliance to be a little bit strong so you can see here the change that it's making and if i hold down that's original and if i leave it at 100 percent strength then it's a little bit too strong for me so i like eye vessels closer to 40 I think that's more natural while still serving the purpose and actually brightening the eyes quite a bit. Now this is something that I went over in the last video and that is the portrait volumes option. This is really if you're going after like a strong makeup, dramatic, glamour style look. Um, that's when you would use this portrait volumes. It's just going to do a lot of more global dodging and burning. That is creating new dark shadows to add depth and contrast to a face, contouring, neckline. It actually goes well beyond the face into like arms and legs and it'll do a whole body. It's actually pretty impressive, but it's a very strong look. If I do use this, I use it in a very low, like 15, 20 percentage, but you can adjust it to your work. But the reason that I wanted to bring it up is because the volumes plugin also affects affects the eyes. You can see that we get a lot of brightness around the eyes through the portrait volume. So just be aware that if you're using multiple of these and you add in eye brilliance on top of portrait volumes, you're just going to have some crazy bright eyes. So I tend to use one or the other. Now the next addition is probably the coolest one because it is the best representation of what's special about the Retouch For Me technology, and that is their masking, whether algorithm or AI, whatever the heck is doing it. If I go in here, I now have a plugin for Retouch For Me skin mask, and this will do the same great masking and identification of the skin, but it won't make any adjustments so that you can use this either for your own dodging and burning or your own adjustments or your own actions. That way it will only apply to the skin and it's really impressive. Before you use it though, you have to add in a layer mask. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna go to filter, retouch for me, skin mask. Again, this one has options for close up, medium and full length portraits, although I just leave it on auto and it always does a great job. Look at that. Everything in red will have a layer mask on it. Look how good that is. Now where most retouching plugins would fail is they would use some type of color identification to create a mask and that would result in problems in this image because the subject's skin tone and her hair color both have similar colors in it so you would get all sorts of masking issues around the edges of the hair but look at how retouch for me does it perfectly carves out that hair i mean okay maybe not perfectly there's a couple pixels here that are a little bit off but it does an exceptional job and you could easily go in there and get it perfect in just a few seconds without having to go ahead and mask this entire image so if I hit apply, 
you can see we now have a skin mask that we can use. We can copy it, we can grab it, we can disable it and just use the selection. There's all sorts of things we can do to now do our own retouching. So this is really cool. But what about difficult images like this one right here where there's really not a presence of a natural skin tone color, right? My subject's skin tone in this image is either blue or this golden color. What about that? Let's see how it does. Now this didn't do as perfect as a job as the other one. You can see we've got a little bit of the clothing right here. This is definitely jacket and not skin tone. But other than that, we have all of the skin in the image, which is really impressive for an image that features no natural skin tone color. Next up, we've got another new plugin, and that is the Retouch For Me fabric. And this one is designed to smooth out wrinkles in clothing. And it's crazy how aggressive it is. Now look at these pants back and forth. It really did a great job smoothing and it did so without modifying any of the background. Now the problem that you inevitably run into is color issues. Now if you look here in on the shirt you can just see that we've got these like blank areas of green which is weird because there was no green coloring there before. So it's definitely not perfect. And I'm gonna file this one under very similar to the clean backdrop in that what it can do is impressive. However, its selection and its replacement oftentimes isn't worth it. Now I can easily go in here and we can get rid of it on just the shirt very easily. Now we've got the benefit with the pants without affecting the shirt at all. And as you can see, the skin, the background, the wood down here, it's all unchanged. So it does have its benefits. I could see this getting put to good use. Um, it just comes with some negatives that you have to be aware of. Lastly, the clean backdrop plugin was updated. You can now choose between coarse dirt, medium dirt, or fine dirt but uh, I still find this to be the most problematic plugin out of all of them in that it often creates selections that are on your subject's clothing and it just creates a lot of little spots around the image. So I simply never use that plugin. It's also rare that I really need to clean a backdrop in general. Now, one of the things that I mentioned in my last video is how some of these plugins can take a really long time, particularly the dodge and burn action in high resolution. And that has largely been resolved. Uh, the dodge and burn plugin went from about five minutes for a 60 something megapixel image all the way down to like 30 to 40 seconds in high resolution. So it got a lot faster and other of the actions such as the heel action have done so as well. So now when you're batch processing, it is a lot faster to get through images. And this just leads to me using it even more aggressively on larger groups of photos. Now I talked about the advantage of batch processing in my last video, but I never showed you exactly how I'm doing that. And all these actions here, you can see some of them are capitalized and some are not. If it's capitalized, that means I run it with high resolution on. And if it's not, then that means it's off. So hands down, my most used action is running heal in high resolution, followed by heal with high resolution off, followed by dodge and burn in high resolution. That one is just great for anything general purpose throughout weddings. I use it, headshots, portrait sessions, uh, editorial stuff. Sometimes I'll shoot that ahead of delivery just to get things a little bit cleaned up in advance. I have a ton of these that I use for different purposes and that's just from the experience of using them. But if you go to record an action or decide that there's a sequence that you might like to apply to a bunch of different stuff, then here's how you would do it. You would first create a new action and we'll just call this one uh, heal dodge burn teeth volume so now we're recording the action I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna pick them one by one we're gonna do a retouch for me heal and as you can see I did all lowercase which means I'm gonna turn high resolution off it's already off Then we're gonna do dodge and burn. This one we're gonna do with high resolution on. Then we will do the white and teeth. And then we'll do portrait volume. We're gonna turn off high resolution. It's already off. And I already know from using it that 100 is way too strong for me. So I'm gonna drop it down to like 30. 
And here you can either add in a save function if you want for batch processing, or you can leave it off. So now I can come into Photoshop, I can go to File, Automate, Batch, and I can choose under the Auto Touch set, I can choose this, the action that I just created, and then we choose a folder that we want to apply it to, select folder, and then we can hit OK, and we can batch process this action to that entire folder. And that's how you can use this software to get a lot of retouching done while you sleep. Now, when I use these plugins for the first six months, I heavily tracked how often I was using it, and I tried to estimate the amount of time the retouching that it was doing would have actually cost me in time. And what I found is that this saved me roughly 175 hours, at least as it pertains to billable work. I did use it more beyond that to just kind of elevate some general projects, but in terms of actual editing work for clients, it saved me about 175 hours in six months, and that would equate to 350 hours over the course of a year. So if this saves me 350 hours of my time, even if my billable time was at $20 an hour, that would be a savings of roughly $7,000 or $7,000 that I'm earning for time that I'm not spending. And I can tell you my rate is not $20 an hour. So when it comes to the cost of these plugins, which is normally about $100 per plugin, uh, that can be looked at as very expensive. But if you are a full-time photographer or you're delivering a high volume of images, the amount of time that this can save you will end up earning you way more in the future. Speaking of price, Right now, for Black Friday, they are offering all their plugins at 35% off. Now, I gave a link in my last video that got you 20% off. Well, right now, if you use that same link, you're going to get 40% off of the normal price. So, huge savings right now. You can basically get two for one. And to me, this has just been my secret weapon. So, at those prices, I think it is an absolutely insane value. I've got that link down in the description below if you're interested. Now, remember, I'm coming at this from a full-time professional professional standpoint. I am delivering thousands of photos every week. Well, maybe not thousands, hundreds of photos every week at least. And this just saves me a ton of time. Now, if you're somebody who is only spending an hour or two in Photoshop per week, well, then maybe it's not going to be as worth it for you. So take that into consideration if you are considering this software. Beyond that, I hope you enjoyed the update on this software. If there feels, if there feels like there's any holes in this, like you don't understand some piece of the software, go ahead and watch my video from last year. That's where I kind of give a broad scope and show examples of each of the default softwares. That way you can get a better understanding of how to use it. But this is really for me, just an update to the people who may have seen that last year. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll catch you in the next one.